Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, a workbench notepad. Well, I found a bunch of these. And, uh, you know, it was in one of those boxes where you keep your VHS tapes and your Chia Pet and your Sony Walkman. And I had a look at it and I was thinking, there has to be a use for them. It's from an old adding machine. And then I looked through some old magazines and I was flipping through and I saw an idea that would be absolutely perfect. And that is what I'm going to bring to you today. And it all starts with a little bit of plywood. Well, the project starts off simply with the base. And the base is nothing more than a three quarter inch thick piece of plywood. And you want to cut it so that it's the dimensions of two and three eighths wide by five and a half inches long. This is going to serve as our writing surface later on. And there's a tiny bit of shaping that is involved, but nothing serious. So once you get that cut, you can put it aside. We now need to concentrate on the two side pieces. And for these pieces, they're going to be half inch thick plywood, and we're gonna cut them to be three inches tall. These are actually a little, little longer. I think it's a three and an eighth. So three inches wide and nine inches long. And you'll need two of those. Well, the very first thing that we want to do is we want to mark for our radius and whatever we do to one piece obviously we have to do to the other because the two sides are identical so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mark our inch and a half center mark right here and we will also mark it from the one end and that will give us the pivot point for our compass And we will now set our compass to an inch and a half just by bringing it to the edge of our board, just like that. And we will draw our three inch radius. At the opposite end from the bottom, we will place a mark here at 13 sixteenths of an inch up. just like that. And we will now place a mark from our inch and a half line here down to the little mark at 13 sixteenths that we just placed on our half inch board. And now using a three quarter circle template, we will round off this sharp corner between our radius and our sloped line. Now on this end of our project, we need to drill some holes. So up from the bottom at 5 sixteenths of an inch, we will place a line. And once we get that line placed, we will place another line to determine where our holes go. So the first uh, mark for our holes will be 5 sixteenths of an inch in. Oh, I've got the wrong pencil. 5 sixteenths of an inch in from the end. And then from this mark right here, you now want to place a mark beyond that at 2 and 7 sixteenths from this mark here. Just like that. Ignore this one. This was a mistake. <laughs> well, now that you have those marks laid out on your initial piece, we can duplicate it on our opposite piece. Now I've center punched each one of our hole locations and on the inside edge of our boards we want to drill at those marks that we made down here 5 sixteenths up from the bottom we want to drill a 3 8 diameter Forstner bit hole and we're going to make it 5 sixteenths of an inch deep. I 
I have a 3 8 diameter straight bit set in the router and I've set it to a height of a quarter inch. And all I'm going to do on the inside surface, starting at the top of our arc, we're going to bring it down and put a quarter inch dado, 3 8 of an inch wide, straight down here until the center of the bit is the same as the center of our axis for our arc. And we'll repeat the process on the other piece on the inside surface. Well, the next step in this process is we're going to head over to the scroll saw and we're going to cut along our lines that we've drawn here. Then we're going to head over to the disc sander, or sorry, the belt sander, and we're going to clean them up and make them so that they're both identical. Well, we're now going to start the assembly. So we're going to need a few pieces of 3 8 of an inch dowel. And you can measure or figure out, it depends on how deep you drilled these holes. You want the measurement to be 2 and 3 8 plus the depth of both of those holes because they will get glued in and that is what is going to hold our back section together. So the first thing that we're going to do is glue those dowels in place. And we can clean up the squeeze out around them. And now we want to glue in our writing surface. Now this writing surface is going to be glued in so that it is completely flush with the slope that we cut here. So make sure that it is and glue it in place and clamp it up. As well, we will add some glue here and basically get the whole assembly glued up. Now I'm just going to use a piece of three quarter inch MDF with wax paper attached to it. And that way we can sit this in place, clamp it up, and we can pretty much be assured that our bottom edges are going to align now. And now go around the whole piece, clean up your squeeze out, and just double check as you go to make sure that this writing surface didn't shift. Well, for now, we have to wait for this to dry. So we can put that aside. And what I have done is I've taken a piece of quarter inch thick hardboard and I basically cut it to the same width as what our entire notebook or our uh, scratch pad assembly is. And then on the one side, leaving a half an inch of material on either side, I did this dado pass by pass on the table saw, um, hence why these ridges are here. But the dado is 1 64th of an inch deep, and this will allow our paper to pass underneath it. So I'm going to take this over to the table saw and I'm going to cut it into two 1 inch wide strips. Well, before we can carry on now with this being dry, we're going to give it a good sanding all over, especially here on the top. The, gl the glue swelled it a little, made the grain rise up, no big deal. We'll give this a, a good sanding here. Don't go so low that you take off layers of the plywood. You don't want that. 
as well what we're going to do is take it over to the belt sander and we have this piece here the three quarter that protrudes a bit we're going to level that off on the belt sander and once we get it all sanded up and we're happy with the way it looks come back and see me and i will move on to the installation of our paper retainers and now we can glue in our one inch paper retainers so we're just going to line them up, put a little bit of glue. We don't need a lot. You want to try to avoid the squeeze out coming into where the paper area is. So just a little smidge of glue here. Same here. And then sit it in place using a square, line it up. And there's our first one in place. I'll just let that set up a bit before I actually clamp it. And now we can line up our bottom one as well. And we'll let that set up just a little bit and then we'll clamp it up and let it dry. Well, now it's time to load our paper. So what we're going to do is we're going to come off the top of the roll. And what I'd like to do is underneath this second dowel, the one that's closest to the front, I want to bring the paper up around the bottom of that. Can you see that there? I wanted to do that because it's going to give it a little more resistance when you're pulling the paper through. You just don't want it to free roll. So here's a little piece of advice for you. It's a little awkward to feed. So just cut your paper on an angle. You don't have to do this all the time. This is just to get it to feed through. And then you can just back it up and it's going to feed underneath where we cut this dado. And there you go. There's that little corner coming through. You can grab your corner and pull it through and then through onto underneath the next piece of hardboard. So then roll up your excess paper. We're going to take a 3 8 dowel, put it through our paper. It's two and three quarter inches long. A 3 8 fender washer on either side of our dowel and then our paper will just plunk down inside here. The washers make it a nice snug fit but yet they don't prevent it from turning. So here, we'll just roll this paper back up here just so we're not being wasteful. And when you're going to tear it off, I would suggest pulling your paper through and then tearing it at the bottom. Here we've got a sharper edge. So you're better off to tear it down there and then you have something to grab and pull for your next note. And whenever you need to write a note in your shop, of course, you can just write your note. <laughs> and it's as simple as when you're done with that piece of paper, peel it down along the bottom, tear it off, and you're ready to go for the next round. And there you have it. A workbench notepad. Guys, I don't even know if these paper rolls are still available. Um, this was from an adding machine when way back in the day, uh, of course, everything was like a dot matrix printed out on these adding machines that weighed about 85 pounds and were this big around. Nowadays, everything is heat paper. Um, so I, I really don't know if they're still available. I'm sure that we can find them out there somewhere. However, if you have some of these lying around, this is a spectacular way to use them up. They're just taking up space anyway, so why not make it so that they're usable in your shop? How many times have you wanted to grab a piece of paper to write down a note or scribble down a measurement and that sort of thing? This is convenient. It doesn't take up a lot of room. It's there whenever you need it, and it's paper at a glance, paper at, at you know, the, the at the tip of your fingertips. It's right there, ready to go, and as much paper if, as you want. Um, a few things here that 
you can change if you want. What if you don't want this thing made out of plywood and hardboard? Well, then don't make it out of plywood and hardboard. The methods and the materials that I show you here on my show are merely a suggestion. It's merely to give you an idea of what to do. And you can feel free to carry it on either over and above what I've done, or if you want to step it down a notch, step it down a notch, whatever you like. It's your shop, it's your project, so do whatever makes you happy. Guys, this project came about because I found these rolls of paper and then through going through reference material and reading up some magazines, I found an old article that where you could use them up. It just goes to show that with a little bit of ingenuity, nothing is really junk, nothing is really uh, disposable. So where normally somebody might have looked at those rolls of paper and said, well, you know what, I don't have the adding machine anymore, so that makes them garbage and toss them in the recycling or the landfill. Here we've come up with a dirt cheap way to make them fully usable and make it so that they're not immediately garbage in, in the shop or garbage in your house. The material from this was all scrap from another build. It was small little pieces. What did we use? Three quarters of an inch of, or three quarter inch thick plywood that was five inches or five and a half by two and three eighths. That's normally considered scrap that you would trash or burn. The side pieces, construction grade plywood, half inch, that was nine inches by three inches, two of them. It's crazy. These pieces normally would have been thrown out, but yet a great usable project. If you haven't already, guys, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. It's been a lot of fun today. It's a quick little project. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're going to try it for yourself. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys, and I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.